Hello everyone and welcome back to day 37 of Bitwise where we code a complete software hardware stack for a simple computer from scratch. Um, last time we uh, continued work on the fourth implementation and we will left off right where we stopped. No, rather we will continue right where we left off. That came out wrong. Um, but I do want to follow up on some of the things that were kind of, um, I don't know, rushed together last second um, at the end of last stream and kind of follow up on some, some cleanup of that code and then connect that to uh, what I plan to be the next stream, uh, which I think uh, is a good opportunity now that we're kind of at the point where we're writing uh, somewhat less trivial assembly code. Um, but, it, but with that out of the way, we'll continue coding basically where we left off and uh, hopefully get to a, an actual interpreter where you can enter stuff uh, with a keyboard and it will immediately, you know, parse it, uh, compile words, execute words, that sort of thing. So let's see how far we get today, but that's the that's the goal. So as a follow up from last time, um, the the two things we did aside from some some explanation stuff at the at the top of, of the stream is that um, we uh, defined the data format for dictionary entries, which um, consists of a link pointer, which uh, chains together all the different entries. So there's a head pointer called latest. And then you follow the chain until you get to a null link, and that's the, the end of the chain. And so if you want to do a lookup, you start at the latest and go through and find the matching entry. And so the um, two of the other parts of that uh, entry uh, are um, the name, which is an ASCII string. It's not, non, it's not null terminated conventionally. It's prefixed by a, uh, by a length. Um, and then after, uh, after this, so the name itself is, is variable length. After this, you have a four byte aligned set of data. And um, this data can be anything, um, but um, it's typically, you know, for user defined words, it would be, you know, the sequence of execution tokens. If it's a hardwired kind of native, natively defined word, it would be assembly code. Oh, oh, oh actually though, the first thing right after the label is uh, the code pointer. Oh, or what is it, the code field, I can't remember what fourth calls it, but the thing that points to the machine code that knows how to interpret that word. And then following that is some variable amount of data. So that it's not totally true that anything can go after the label. The first thing after the label has to be uh, the code pointer. So anyway, uh, so that was the data structure. And you can also see we have some helper constants here just to let us do the address math when we're uh, reading these different fields. So uh, the link pointer is at offset zero because this has length four as a, um, you know, 32 bit pointer. Uh, the one byte name offset is uh, four bytes from the beginning. And then the name itself starts at, at uh, byte five or the, the yeah, start, starts, uh, starts here. Um, and then follows however many uh, bytes are indicated by the length. Um, right, and so the, I guess the first non-trivial assembly code we wrote on stream uh, was this thing here, which was a bit of a mess last time. Um, I tried to write it sort of directly in assembly without thinking of it as a structured program. And then eventually I fell back to the old trustworthy method of writing it as a kind of low-level C code and then doing a one-to-one -one transliteration. Um, and that's why I wanted to make a note about what I hope to be the next stream. Um, I don't have enough prepared today to really do a good job of it, but um, I just wanted to sort of advertise it in case. I, I, I figure just based on comments I'm seeing that this is something people would find helpful. Um, and, you know, like basically the point is when you're writing simple assembly code like this, the, um, you know, there's no reason to use another language to translate your thoughts. So even though you're a C programmer, this is sort of direct enough that you don't really gain much. Like you could write this as uh, a C code and then transliterate it to assembly code, but you wouldn't really gain much. It's pretty much direct. There's not much difference between the intention and the final code. But when it comes to stuff that has, you know, like a bunch of different live registers. So in this case, we have T1 through T7, so seven different live registers. Um, at that point, you start want to document what the role of the different registers are. Um, you also want to try to keep clear, like one of the bugs I had last time when we were, uh, after writing it and then debugging it, is that some of these loads were trying to load things as words rather than bytes and stuff like that. Um, and that's the sort of thing where um, having a higher level picture of what's going on, like what you're actually trying to accomplish, it's very helpful. And I think especially with the control flow, for me at least, um, 
there's standard ways of generating sort of control flow, like assembly level control flow instructions and labels and stuff to correspond to structured control flow in the C style, right? With while and if and so on. Um, and um, and so once it gets to a certain certain point, it becomes, I, it's not necessary, but it becomes helpful to start thinking more like a C programmer and then um, translating things. And the other nice thing about it is you can use it as comments. Um, so uh, this is quite a bit better than what I had last time. Last time I had some co C code as well, but it was uh, uh, maybe not, it, it kind of was a, I was trying to think too much like an assembly programmer, I guess. And so it was sort of a mixture where the comments were just kind of aping. Finally, the, the comments were more or less just aping what the assembly code was doing. So they weren't really providing additional context. Uh, the way that it's written now, I tried to use, you know, variable names that are somewhat descriptive rather than just using the temp register names and stuff like that. But you can see there's still a one-to-one -one correlation. So this is one of the things I would recommend you do when you're trying to handwrite assembly code and I'll get more into this in the next stream I have planned but um, basically try to write C code at the granularity where things more or less map to a single assembly instruction uh, obviously this depends a little bit on the target instruction set but something like what you're seeing here is pretty typical um, you know notably there's typically only one expression per statement you don't have nested expressions you only have single level expressions um, um, and you know you know the way you, you use these immediate offsets for loads and stores to do address map so here it's written as a uh you know a pointer field dereference thing and what it turns into is you know you do um you add this constant name length offset to compute the field offset and then you do a load from that um and for uh for while loops there's there's sort of two ways of expressing while loops conventionally in assembly the structure here is not what I wrote yesterday. Um, this here is actually kind of like a do while loop with a jump to the end of the do while body so that you skip the first iteration, which is normally always executed in a do while loop. But uh, but anyway, uh, I, I hope you can see that this uh, kind of structure makes it very readable and writable. I mean, it's easy to write this code as well as read it. Uh, and I even used indentation, which... Um, uh, I, I always felt weird about like it doesn't it's not something you see most assembly programmers do there's sort of a tradition an unspoken tradition in uh, in assembly programming where everything is column aligned like you're still writing on punch cards or something like that um, and you know I think there's a point you, you can probably make an argument that um, when you have structured control flow it's a good habit to indicate the block structure like this but um, some people will find this uh, uh, sacrilegious so uh, your mileage may vary, but I think uh, especially trying to get C programmers to start being able to be competent assembly programmers, this is probably a good habit for us to follow. Um, even though some people might look at you a little bit askance. All right. Um, right, right, right. So yeah, what I mean, as if you don't remember what this thing does exactly, the idea is that you push a name pointer and a name length on top of the stack, and then it returns a pointer to the dictionary entry if one exists. So it's either zero or null, if there is no such entry, or it's the pointer to the entry. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. All right. Um, So um, let's see here. Probably the next thing we want to do is um, now that we have a way to do this lookup, we need a way to actually read data into a temp buffer so we can do this kind of lookup. Because right now, for t to test it, we just have you know a statically initialized test word here. So just to remind you of what the code does, we have a uh, we have this test thing here that's just hardwired in the assembly code, um, and then we push we, we we push the string pointer and we push the length of the string and then we uh, we call that find word and then right now we're just outputting the first digit of it as ASCII, which is garbage. This should really <laughs> this should really change, I think. Um, one thing that might be fun to write, well. There's a question of whether we should write this in fourth or not. 
Um, uh, one, one quick note is that the stuff like find that we're writing here, we're, we're writing it in assembly. A lot of this stuff, even though it's very low level, like it seems like it's needed to bootstrap, you can actually write it in fourth. Um, and you can do that in two different ways. You could write it just by doing def word and then, um, I mean, we would need some control flow instructions we don't have right now, but could easily be added. But uh, the point is a lot of this stuff could be written essentially in fourth and just hand compiled into the image, but it would still be fourth. It would just not be parsed through a string parser. It would sort of be hard hand compiled, but it would still be, you know, a sequence of four fourth execution tokens uh, rather than assembly code. So you could do that. And um, I think uh, later we will probably revisit some of these things and move some things into fourth um, that are currently in assembly. But for now to bootstrap, um, let's not worry too much about whether something is in assembly or in fourth. Let's just write things in assembly. Um, when when it seems apropos uh, so anyway um right so let's um let's do some input stream management stuff um okay so uh, we have this put char get char stuff right now um, which is fine for what it is but we would also like to be able to especially for testing uh, but but also as an actual feature we would like to be able to also you know, kind of seamlessly read from, like ha have a single sort of standard input output type of deal, uh, or rather standard input where we can kind of switch what we're reading from. Um, so let's do some kind of buffered input stream uh, stuff. And um, so I think the way we will do that is that we will have a, um, we will have a pointer to, um, you know, again, like actually, let me let me write it in C, right? Because again, I'm I'm going to try to to, to get into the habit of doing that, right? Sort of low-level C code as a uh, prototype for this stuff. So you basically want to have some sort of um, you want to have something like this. Um, where you have uh, two pointers that delimit uh, an input buffer, and um, and then you want to have a um, you want to have some sort of function that is like I guess it's usually called key in fourth, although I can never remember if um, can never quite remember if a uh, key always goes from the keyboard or it goes from the buffer. Um, um, but anyway, um, so essentially what it's going to do is, uh, let's see. I mean, it will more or less be something like this. So we return zero. Um, I guess it's blocking. Actually, so let's not worry about this part. Let's worry about how we use it, and then we'll figure out what that uh, requires. So there's usually something called word and forth, which um, reads the next word. Um, and so you want to basically skip some delimiters. And so it will be like, while, um, let's see. Um, I'm going to write it a little bit different than conventional C, like by not having kind of compound uh, conditions and stuff. So I'm going to write it like this, um, for example, uh, which is equivalent to writing or, right? This is equivalent to writing this. 
um, but I'm going to flatten it out like this so it has a closer correspondence to assembly code. Um, and uh, then here we're met with the first non um, I guess we should do something like this. Um, if if we're at the end, then um, so we want this to have a stack effect where basically it writes it writes out this kind of format um, like a string pointer and a length. And um, so it's just going to be like this. Um, length zero string and, uh, you know, null pointer and then return. So we're done. Um, and then after skipping all the initial stuff, we are then going to um, repeatedly, um, we're going to repeatedly read into a buffer. So there's going to be some sort of global, uh, which I will call just word and, uh, well, let's call it word lang. Oh, OBS disconnected. Just wait for it to reconnect. All right, sorry. Uh connection just dropped for a sec so I'm just waiting for it to get back um, so yeah what I was saying is that um, we're going to have a static buffer um, which this thing is going to overwrite and then it's going to return you know it's going to return a pointer and so on to this thing um, actually I guess we don't necessarily need to know the length as a global um, so something like this and uh, and then uh, so once we once we've skipped all the uh, the blanks, uh, we are going to um, you know uh, have this uh, pointer here. I'm just going to call it p. No reason to make it longer than it needs to be. Um, and then essentially what we're going to do is, um, and I might write. I mean. I guess there's a question with this stuff. Should I write it as a loop or not? Um, but um, let's see. So this points to the current input. Um, points of the current thing and so we have to increment it and then we have to see, see basically the same kind of logic we did before where if input is input end um, go to done and then if C is this then we're done if it's a new line we're also done something like this Um, and then in here we um, we assign to this buffer and we increment uh, let's see
I'm just gonna put this I'm gonna put this here. I could just say word buff, but I want to signify that this goes in a register basically. Uh, let's just call it that. Um, pointer C increment the pointer. Increment the input. If we're reach the end, then we're done. If uh, then we read the next character, and if that is a uh, blank, then we're also done. I mean, you could also just write it as break, I suppose. But uh, let's write it with go to. Um, and then once we're here, we have to, uh, I guess we should probably just put this, we can put this at the beginning to prepare for the fact that whatever happens, we're always going to, um, we're always going to make room for two elements on the stack. Um, in this case here, you want to, well, start and um, pointer minus start. Let's do it like this. All right, so um, this here is a pretty, uh, I think is, you know, if you're a C programmer, this is maybe a little bit weird and unstructured, but it's kind of at the level where it's both easy to understand a C code and it's also easy to translate to assembly code. That's kind of the idea. Um, And so um, let's just do that. Let us just do that. So um, the first thing is this, and the way we're going to handle that in assembly code is that we're just going to say word buff, um, and this is you know wherever this goes, right? We can choose exactly where to place this in memory, but wherever this goes, this is going to be like I'm going to say fill 256. That just means fills 256 zero. So we're just going to zero initialize this thing, um, and um, this here is going to be def code. Um, I'm just going to call it like this. Yeah, I'm going to have the stack effect be in a comment. Um, and then, you know, we basically just go through this stuff. We can write it exactly uh, like it's written here. Uh, one one difference is that SP is not a char pointer. It's a uint32 pointer. And as a result, when it says plus two here, it really means plus eight in terms of bytes. So, um, yeah. Um, so here's an if, and uh, to do the if, essentially, it's going to be an unconditional skip, or you know, it's going to basically what is it going to do is it's going to say if it's not. Um, oh, so let's first uh, load. Like input and input end are um, global variables. So I'm going to, and I'm just going to assign registers sequentially. Um, so we're going to put those in T1 and T2. These don't necessarily have directly corresponding lines here um, because we're directly referencing global variables rather than registers. But you can think of, you know, you can think of these here being, uh, being like that. Um, so anyway, um, and then this is going to be, you know, if these are not equal, then we're going to uh, go to a certain label. 
um, I guess we already uh, want to repeatedly go back to this stuff. So we're going to assign a label, which means this is probably going to be two. Um, and so this stuff will be skipped. And so um, if this executes, then we're going to say, uh, minus eight, zero, um, minus four, zero. And again, the, the eight versus two is because of byte addressing versus word addressing. Uh, and then we're just going to, to do this. Um, and then this here, you can think of as basically I mean, if you want to sort of have a line by line correspondence, this is kind of like, you know, where this thing goes. Um, I guess let's uh, let's do the indentation. Um, Yeah, actually, let's do this. And so this here is we need another register which holds the current character we're reading, and let's make that T3. And so this is going to read from T1, which is where input resides. Um, and then this stuff here is is pretty direct. You want to do a conditional jump, and so we are going to say um, if uh, if this is equal. Oh, and so. Um, we can't do comparisons to immediates here. So uh, we're actually going to, um, let's see, let, let me let me think about what other registers we need just so. Um, we need uh, this, so we need these two. Um, we need these two. So that's uh, three, four. I mean, let me just call them like seven, eight. Um, and so um, these are going to be immediate and we're just going to load them into registers at the top here. Um, and so what is it? We just use this. Um, and then we can do this by saying if, uh, if T3 is equal to T7, then skip. And I guess skip is going to be uh, the backwards jump. And same thing here. Um, and so if you get to this point, we're actually going to read a word. Uh, and so this is going to be. Uh, well, this is a pointer, so we should actually do a load address. And so this is going to load the absolute memory location of this thing we've reserved up here, so it uses the label. Um, and then pointer is just going to uh, be a copy of that, essentially. So it's going to start start there. Um, and then when we have now we have a loop, so we need some kind of um, um, maybe I will actually um, remove the loop and turn that into go tos. And write it like this. Um, Oh, sorry, this is already the comment. And so the first thing we do is we store, so T4 is the is the pointer, and so we store whatever is in T3, right? 
no, no, so wait, T3 is already loaded, so it's 4, 5. And so we want to store N2, 5, whatever is in T3. Um, and then we have to uh, we have to increment the pointer, and the pointer is in T5, and we increment that by, by 1. And actually, so this is a good example where this is a store byte, not store word. Um, and we also increment um, the input pointer, which is T1. Um, and then you have to do a branch to say, if, uh, if these two things are equal, then we're done. And I'm just going to say done for now, and we're going to uh, assign the number for that when, when we're uh, further. And then at this point, we um, we load the new character, and then we do um, the same stuff we did before. Um, Um, and this is just going to be jump three. Maybe I'll put this in the top so that this is sort of preload to just load, load some things. Um, All right, so where were we? And then when we're done, um, so done is going to be label four, so we can just fill this in now. Uh, when we're done, we're going to we're going to compute the length. Um, the way I'm going to do that is to just overwrite the register in place rather than allocating a new register because uh, we're done with. Uh, the pointer register at this point. So you can just say sub, um, the pointer register is T5, right? So you can just say subtract, um, subtract start, and start is T4. Um, and then uh, this here is minus eight, start, and start is uh, T4. Um, and uh, for this, length is now T4, so or, or T5. T5. Uh, and then there's an implicit return, so we're just going to write that as next. Um, Someone's asking which registers are Kali saved. Well, um, it's kind of a custom calling convention. The the Kali save there's no there's actually no Kali save registers per se. Like there are global registers that always have a fixed role, and then there are temp registers which you know are always destroyed. Um, you're supposed to use the stack for most things because it's the fourth interpreter. Um, Oh, someone said I forgot to increment. Uh, you need to increment. Choice. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, well, let's see. So we skip it. So let me just think about where it needs to be skipped. Um, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So let me see if that makes sense. So we read this character. Okay. 
which also means I think this needs to go here. Something like this. Rather than doing this next step, let me actually do the loop. I, I, I do kind of... Then we can also kind of increment this to correspond to that. Let's see. Let's also just use break. I mean, there's no. All right. Um. Yeah, let's try something like this. Oh, and input, th these two need to be um, kind of globals as well. And so, um, you know, I'm just going to, let's see, just put them on a, I'm just going to set them like this just to get the code assembling. Um, So um, let's try something like this. Great. Com oh no, I guess it didn't completely fuck up the indentation. Um, but it kind of did. All right. Um, I think that's the way I'm doing things. So let's see if that works. I would say low chance of it working, but um, let us try it. No constant name, T7. T5, sorry. Oh, right. So T5. Let's typo. Okay, that actually assembled without errors. Um, someone's saying the last comment is wrong. Oh, I see what you're saying. Thank you for that catch. Um, Can also do this. Um, all 
All right. All right, let's try this. Um, so word buffer. Just align these. Um, word buffer right now, it's obviously not filled in. Um, I should fill it in with something. Oh no, wait, it starts, uh, the, yeah, sorry. So the, let me, let me say input buff. Um, let's say this is, so foobar, so it's two words. Um, an input buff or input end is here, and then these are just uh, like that. So again, the, here we're still using a uh, a static buffer, but uh, you know we could point it to anything. It just happens that right now we're pointing it to that fixed thing. All right, um, this is 256. All righty, so um, let's see what happens if we do, I'm trying to figure out where's the entry. Um, let's just, I, I keep like I have a lot of the old code after it, but I'm just going to uh, so let's make the infinite loop. Um, let's make an infinite loop, and then I guess uh, put digit. We should really put. I'm going to put in multiplication and division instructions to the instruction sets. So we can actually do some proper multi-digit number display. Uh, we could also just hand code the uh, the division in assembly, but that's, at that point we might as well just put it in the simulator and the instruction encoder and decoder. But anyway, so uh, I'm going to say we're going to call word, and so that should put the address and the length on top of the stack. Um, the address should always be fixed. It should always be the word buffer. Um, so the interesting thing is really the um, the interesting thing, I'm going to put a get digit just to prevent the loop from going crazy. So I would expect the first result to be three and the second result to be three and then subsequently to get zeros. So let's see, I mean, fat chance of that happening first time through, I guess. Okay. I don't know what the ASCII. Oh, well, I guess the stack is not in a good state anyway. So word should push adder and length. So if you put digit, it will pop the length. And so the other thing is we should, we do have a drop word, right? Yeah. So we should drop this to put the stack back into a good state. Um, we should drop this too after we get it. Um, I'm going to step through it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so it's outputting this. It's probably not right. Um, because it's a Greek letter, I can guess it's in the, in the upper part of the code page. It's not in the ASCII part of the code page. All right, let's just single step it. Um, Actually, let me just do this trick. Um, just want to be able to see what the address is. So the address is 444, just so that I can easily recognize it when we get there. So 444, and then yeah, four past that because 444 would be the header word. Um, 
actually, I guess what I want is this. Not that it makes, but just to make sure it's consistent. Yeah, so 448. Um, all right, so the first thing we're going to do Right. This is always a little bit annoying, but um, T1 starts counting at X8. Be nice if these started counting at their natural number. Um, and actually, let me make that happen so I don't have to make that mental translation. Um, I can just make these. So like, I don't know. Actually, let me put them somewhere where I can easily see them, like 29, 30, so it's the bottom row. 29, 30, 31, 32. Oh, sorry. So they're serial based. Do I really display 32 registers? That's wild. That's totally not correct. So that's um, print heart state. Yeah, that function is totally busted. All right, so let's do 25, 26, et cetera. Uh, 25, 26, 27. All right. Um, So, 448 AUIPC, okay, so let, let's just go back to our code and see what that is. So this is loading supposedly the name pointer, or sorry, 
that's refined. It's not the right one I'm looking at here. Um, right, loading the input buffer location and then loading the uh, the end of that. And so that is about right in terms of the number of characters. It's foo space bar, so that's seven. Um, And then load some ASCII characters for the seven and eight. Um, let's see. So this should skip. And then we load. Um, Load the first character. Oh, I already saw one issue, by the way, um, which is that um, I don't know if that was actually the issue, but because so, so let me just mention it. Um, we have to write back the updated value of input that we're um, incrementing. So that's something that's kind of invisible because we're doing. You know, this would be more visible if we were using lo local variables for this stuff. Um, but basically, that's something you have to remember if you're caching things in registers. Um, so when we're done, uh, we have to store back to input. Let's see, t1, which we have been incrementing. Expected comic that new line. Well, yeah, you need a temp register to do that kind of store back. Um, I mean, you can use pretty much anything at that point. Okay, so at least it goes omega, which God knows what that is, and then zero. So it does do some advancement. Anyway, I just wanted to. Okay, let's do the single stepping again here. Okay, so here's the loop. We load the next character into X3. Um, this is a sign extended load. Okay, so this is a bug. That's probably the bug. Again, this should be a one byte load, not a word load. Same thing here. This is an easy mistake to make because in C, you're kind of used to the types doing the work for you. When you dereference a, a type pointer, it, it knows the size of the quantity to load. So that's something that's easy to mess up if you are not careful. Okay, so emits two things and then zero, which is what I would expect. So then. Um, okay. load the next character, increment that, check if it's blank, and it isn't x4, uh, 
where do we load X4? All right. T3. That's wrong. This should be T4. I think we renumbered. Okay, now we're good. It was just some typos. Um, so this actually seems to work. Let's make it something more interesting, like um, like this. Three seven. That's correct. We should also be able to have some stuff at the beginning and some stuff at the end. Um, and some, some new lines. Um, and that works. All right, so miraculously that seems to work. Um, I think we've been running for an hour because I started later than usual. So we're not that far in. Let me just check here. Yeah, one hour, so we can keep going. Oh, so what is it printing? So basically, uh, yeah, I should emphasize that. If it wasn't clear, hang on. Um, so it, it, the actual test program that we're executing in a loop executes Word, which reads the next white space delimited character from the input buffer, and then it pushes the address point, you know, the pointer to the word buffer, is the temp buffer, and the length. And so then we're outputting the length, which is on top of the stack, and then we're dropping the pointer because we're just for now we're just displaying the length. Uh, and then here, the get digit is just basically to wait for input so the infinite loop doesn't spin indefinitely. But uh, uh, but that's basically it. So it reads, it keeps reading the next word in the buffer and printing the length. Um, and so first time is three because that's pair and then bones in the seven characters and then zero because there's no more uh, no more words in the buffer. So, um, So yeah, so if if you think about what were the bugs in the assembly code, um, and like like I mean I guess it's interesting to review. So, so first you can see this stuff takes longer to write than C code, um, but not by a whole lot, by like a a constant, <laughs> a constant factor that's hopefully not too large. But the two bugs I had was there was some stuff that would have been a bug even in the C code, like I was forgetting to increment the pointers. So those are not assembly specific. Um, the other thing was I was doing word loads when I should have been doing byte loads. So that's uh, something to pay, t pay attention to because when you do something like start input implicitly, the load is the size of the pointer, the base type of the pointer, which is char. And so uh, I should be more careful about that. Um, and then I think there were just some typos in terms of mapping, uh, keeping track of which temp registers corresponded to what variables. Um, and you can potentially help that by creating temporary label, uh, temporary register numbers that correspond to these guys in the context of the function. But um, I would kind of caution against that because once things get a little bit more complicated, you often find yourself reusing the same register for different purposes throughout um, throughout a function. Uh, and at that point, the the sort of the helpful labels become somewhat misleading potentially. So. Um, I think that's one part of the assembly cognitive overhead you just have to swallow. Um, for global variables, it's different because here we have these nice shorthands. These are fixed function, uh, fixed roles, so we don't have to worry about the meaning of x25 changing. Um, but for some of these temporaries, the, the meanings do change throughout a function. We actually have a simple example even here where at the very end, we, uh, we uh, reuse TFT5 to store the length. Uh, whereas previously it stored the um, 
you know, the, the running pointer that we're incrementing throughout this loop. All right. Um, now that we have a word, we should be able to um, chain it into find, which is the thing we wrote last time, because they have the same, they have compatible stack effects. So if I now do find, um, depending on, you know, we should get either zero, well, let me, um, let me write a helper. Uh, let me write a word here. This needs to be built in anyway. Um, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, not equal or not init. It's called NEQ. So it's usually denoted like this. You know. Um, and all it does is it does. Um, let's see. Set if uh, set if not equal. I think that's what it's called. Uh, set if not equal. Like this. That is what it's called, right? Oh wait, right. They don't have. Uh, we're supposed to synthesize it from these. Like you can do. Uh, you can do. Let me think. Um, think if you want to do x equal to I think what you do is well let's do this first off um, which you can do in a different way by just doing SLT um, I guess there's no adjustment SLT T1 0 U because if you're less than or see, less than or equal to 0 oh there's no EQ version so that one eh, let me look at the instruction manual I, I know there are neat um, synthesized versions oh right it's three operand Set if less than or equal. Oh right, set then set if less than or equal to one. Let's just make this a. Um, let's put this in the command table.
Let's do the other one as well, which I guess is maybe what we want for this specific thing. Right, so if you're strictly greater than zero in an unsigned sense, then you're non-zero. Gotcha, that makes sense. Not equal to zero. I guess something like this, right? Load the top thing on the stack. Um, set of not equal to zero. And then put that back on the stack. Oh, right, I have to do. Do it like this. Okay. Okay. Um. So rather than printing the pointer directly, I'm going to print whether it's non-zero. Um, we don't have to do this. Okay. So basically, I want to print zero or one, depending on whether it's zero or non-zero. So it's printing zero. Um, let's make the what was it called? Word buff. Let's make this like drop. Uh, and drop should match because that is a word in the dictionary. Right, so it prints one for the first one. And so if I do like, you know, or zero, like this one, um, and then let's do another one like that. And so one, let's just reference it. One means that the the at sign match something in the dictionary, drop match something in the dictionary, uh, not equal to zero match something in the dictionary. Bonesen should not match, so that should be zero. But then uh, exclamation mark should match something, and then back to zero because we're just getting zero length strings at this point. Okay, so that seems to work. Um, So now we can we can look these up. We can find them. And for now, we're just doing this test output. Um, but you could also you could execute it. So normally, um, let's write a word. Call it execute. Um, so I think is what it's normally called. And, and you put an execution token on the stack. 
Um, and the way it works is you let me just remind myself what next does. You basically want to do let me put it in a macro. Um, let me think of what you want to do. I think it's this stuff here. So you put something in the execution token register and then it does this. Next is responsible for loading the execution token from the instruction stream, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, and so this thing here basically does, loads the, loads the execution token, not from wherever the program counter is pointing, but from the top of the stack. Um, and then executes it rather than calling next. I guess it has to return. So when you do the execute, yeah, you want it to return to where it was. It's not tail calling. So what I'm doing here is not totally correct. Um, let me think about that. When I'm executing the word, it needs to be able to know where to go next. But actually, this is correct because the program counter at this point is going to point to um, whatever, whatever called execute. Okay, so that should be fine, actually. Okay. Um, um, To test it, let me um, to test it. Let me do a little stub here up at the top. So we're going to uh, push a token. And so we're go I'm going to push something I want to call, like I don't know. I want to call some word. I guess we can just call. Uh, let's let's print nine. Um, and then I push the execution token which is for put digit, and then I call, uh, why did I say push? It should be like that. And then I do execute. And so this is basically like an indirect call, like through a function pointer, except it's called an execution token, uh, and forth. So let's see if that actually prints nine. Okay, it did print nine. So that seems to work. So um, so in order, we can't just do, we can't do this directly to execute the thing it read from, from the, the word buffer because um, it could be something that doesn't match. So we can only do that if it's non-zero, basically. Um, we can only do it if it's non-zero. That said, Um, let's not worry too much about that. Oh, uh, the, the other thing we have to do is that uh, find actually returns a, a pointer to the header. So we have to somehow convert from that to a pointer to the execution token, which is going to be XT offset. Well, we can't actually do that statically because it depends on the name length. So we have to we have to define a function to do that. Um, and I'm just going to call it XT. Um, to signify that it takes an entry and, um, and pushes the execution token length of the stack. So we have on top of the stack, um, we have a pointer to an entry. And then we have to, let's see here. 
we have to read the name length. Um, so we read, and this is a byte. Remember to get that right. If this is a byte, um, then we have to add to the entry pointer. We have to add um, t2 and the name offset because this is where it starts. So here, this computes name offset plus the name length, which we just loaded. And then we have to align it because everything has to be four byte aligned. So we have to add three here, and then we have to and this with not three in order to do the upward alignment. Um, and that I believe is how that goes. Let me just read that in my head. Um, get the entry pointer. Load the name offset, which is a byte. Or load the name length, rather. Add the name length to the name offset, and then three, because to prepare for the um, roundup to a four byte boundary. And then this does the round down, but because we added this bias of three, this actually acts as a round up. And um, and then finally we load. No, we don't load from this. We just this is the execution token, so we just put that back on the stack. Um, and so. So now we do word, find, xt, and then execute. Um, and between every execute, I'm going to um, just wait for a, you know wait for a carriage return so we can. Uh, So we can do one at a time. Load the word, find the entry, find the execution token, execute it. And so um, right now we don't have, I don't want to do an integer parser just to to get things going. So I'm actually going to define some hard coded uh, I'm going to define some hard coded entries that correspond to constants like um, you can basically just do this like um, oh sorry um, You know, we just store this on the stack. So, and you could do this for all the different digits, but let's just do one just to get things going here. Um, actually, let's do zero as well, just to have two different things we can print. And this thing can also be done without a register by using the zero register. We can be done without an immediate load. Um, all right. And then let's go back to our word buff thing. And we should be able to put something like one put digit. Currently does jack shit. Um, let me uh, let me put this back in just to confirm that things are matching.
I see. So the first thing is matching. Oh, put digit isn't. That's the problem. So one is matching. This is probably called something else. No, it is called put digit. So that's interesting that that's not matching. Let's try one one plus. Okay, it's almost like the last thing doesn't doesn't match. Um, which I guess is fine. Let's put in a dummy thing. Okay, so put digit, put digit for some reason straight up never matches. That's interesting. So the, if I did plus put digit, would that match? So one, two, three. Only matched. Oh, I guess add is actually not called add. Sorry. Okay, one, 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 okay. So four matches. Um, four matches. Put it. Put it. It still doesn't match, which is interesting, because the only thing I can see that's different about it is that I'm using def word rather than def code, but they should be using the same common. I mean, let's call this emit, for example, which I think is what it's called in fourth conventionally. Like if I do this, do I get? No. So maybe it's just def word has problems. Def entry. You know what? I know exactly what it is. It's because of the way I string together the dictionary. So these are not visible in the dictionary. By the time, what is it, LA something something. Latest, where's the latest const stuff? Right. Um, everything has to be done before this point, basically. That's the problem. That is the problem. Okay, so let's see if this works. So that was four things, which is what is there. And so, okay, rather than just doing this dry run, we should actually execute them. Um, Okay. 
They're clearly not working. All right, let's think we'll step it. You know what, instead of, we should, I, I should be testing this directly. Like, um, um, I should test XT directly by pushing something that I know is a correct execution token and seeing if execute works with it. So for example, um, let's push, um, let's push nine and let's push uh, why do I keep that in that? Uh, and let's push put digit. No, so okay, yeah, that should work. So that's just straight up. I think I may, maybe this was the one I tested in the problem. I guess I really should test XT directly. Um, Right, so that does print nine. Okay, let me. Uh, I'll just make a label there. Uh, put digit entry and then do XT. Let's see if that works. Okay, so that does not work emphatically. So this is pushing the pointer to the entry, which includes all the header crap. And so presumably the problem is actually in XT. So let's see. So I get the pointer. I add to the pointer the name length offset and load that as a byte. I then to that offset, or sorry, to that length, I add the name offset, which is where the name actually begins, plus three, and that becomes um, the new pointer. And then I end it with a complement of three to downward align it. And then finally, I store that back on top of the stack and I make the next one. Okay, let's just single step that, but that looks correct. Okay, so we push something on the stack. Okay. So this is the right place. Um, name line offset is for because we're skipping the link. And I guess put digit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it does have eight characters. 
And so 2, 8, it's going to add x1, which is a pointer. And it's 8 plus I guess that looks a little bit wrong. Yeah, that's totally bogus. I think that might be an assembler bug actually. Oh no, that is uh, that is actually right. Um, I mean, I want this to be, yeah. You can't do that. Okay, I think I was trying to do too much in one operation. So you do that, and then you do. Uh, that okay okay so that was the problem hopefully the only problem Yay! So here we single stepped um, through a program that is now specified in a, uh, a buffer here. Actually, I don't know why this stuff should not. Don't really want this to live in this segment. Anyway, that may be enough for today. Um, let me see how long have we been going. A bit more than an hour and a half, so this might be a good stopping point. Let me just verify that I didn't break it without refactoring. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Um, might be cooler if we could read directly from the keyboard. I mean, obviously that's next. Right now we're reading from a buffer. Um, but I mean, we're already going from, from string data to sort of immediate execution semantics. Um, so you could also do Well, what's this? We already have something called twice, right? So you could also say this. So this would be two, and then twice is four, and then put that. So let's see if that works. Four, correct. So anyway, yeah, that might be a good place to stop. Um, We basically have the whole pipeline here from string data to uh, an, an interpreter that can immediately execute that. Um, the two next steps we need to do, which we will do next stream or whatever we, next stream might be a, a just focused on assembly, uh, how to write assembly, like how to write any C, any C code you could write, how to turn that into assembly by hand. Um, but once we get back to the to the fourth stuff, either in that session or the next one, basically the next step is, um, I mean, first off, making sure that the input buffer can be populated not just from string buffer, but also from you know uh, keyboard data. And um, then the other thing we need to do is, uh, aside from just expanding the language, but in terms of kind of bootstrapping stuff like that, is um, Right now, everything is being executed immediately. Um, but when you're compiling a word, when you're defining a new word, rather than executing the execution token, the XT, 
you want to append it to the current definition so that rather than executing it immediately, you're appending it to a definition for, for, for you know, future execution. Uh, so that's the compilation step. And the only difference really is that depending on whether you're in one mode or the other, you do the, you do the same thing here. This uh, three word sequence is always the same, but depending on whether you're in one mode or the other, you either execute it immediately or you just append the XT to the current definition which is just a, you know, appending a pointer to a buffer. Um, so that's really the only difference between interpretation and an execution and uh, interpretation and compilation in a fourth system, which is why the, which is why fourth is so beautiful. It has a, a very smooth interplay between interpretation and compilation. But anyway, uh, I think that's it for today. I will see everyone next time, uh, which will probably be focused on, like I said, sort of a structured brain dead process for writing assembly code, much like we did here. But I'll be covering even more control flow constructs and how to deal with, um, you know, structs and other kinds of compound data for address generation and how to handle the register allocation and stuff like that. So uh, tune in next time if you're interested in, in learning that. Otherwise, we'll return to fourth either in that session or the one after that.